Hi, I'm Bishop J. Drew Shear. And I'm Karen Clark Shear. And we are delighted to have this opportunity to share with you uh, some things about our marriage. Um, we've been married for 31, 30. 31 and a half years. We got married June 16th, 1984. And God has been good to us and uh, he has blessed us. It hasn't always been easy. I know I got on our nerves sometimes, <laughs> but nevertheless, we pulled through. Huh? Not that bad. Not that bad. Okay. And so, uh, your your first question that you ask is, how did we meet? And uh, our, the way we met is uh, that our parents, of course, her mother, Dr. Mandy Moss Clark, and my mother and father. Uh, were a part of the same church. Uh, my mother and father sung in the choir under Dr. Maddie Moss Clark's uh, direction at Bailey Temple, Church of God in Christ. Uh, and, um, and so we've been knowing each other from just about all our lives. And uh, however, uh, you know, you had to have a defining moment. The defining moment was in uh, 1978, in 1978, um, Karen was at a musical, well, we were both at a musical at Cathedral Center on uh, Jefferson. And um, that's when Cupid hit me. I was looking at her. She was standing on the porch, and uh, her and her mom were standing on the porch. And then, and then I said to my best friend, I said, oh, I think I'm going to talk to Karen Clark. And, uh, and that was in August of that year. And then I started talking to her. And then in January of um, 79 oh, is... Uh, good with the dates. I know, you know, I got my dates right. Wow. January of 1979 is when I invited her to my house because my mom gave me a birthday dinner every New Year's Day. And she came down, and then we started talking from then. And then we had uh, we went out on a date because the Youth Congress was that always the first week of the new year. And we went out that night. And you probably want to tell them what happened on our first date. <laughs> <laughs> well, of course, I was glad that he asked me to go out. <laughs> but... Um, that date was very, very um, productive up until one circumstance. <laughs> Here we go. Well, we had our dinner and we had a wonderful night. Husband. Well, you got to remember who came in. Do you remember the saints came in? What y'all doing here? You remember? Right. Yes. I won't yeah. call her names. Yeah, you they were looking like, what are y'all doing together? What y'all saying? <laughs> You're right. You know? Okay, go but, ahead. Um, of course, as the night went on, we had an awesome night. I mean, we had a wonderful conversation, everything. And so we end our night getting ready to go outside. And uh, of course, um, Bishop walks. We walk to the car. <laughs> and when he walks to the car, he opens the door for me, being the gentleman that he is. And of course, um, everything went well up until when he put that key in that ignition. <laughs> and nothing would start. <laughs> that is funny. That's funny. That's a shame. I felt embarrassed for him. My car wouldn't start. I had to call my dad to come get me. He came and traded cars with me. And of course, I took her home in my dad's car. And of course, my... Uh, my mother-in-law cracked up. She <laughs> cracked up. She, yeah. And uh, so, anyway, that's how we, you know, not not necessarily met, but that was our first date, and uh, and we've been very fortunate. And um, I think you ask, uh, what, how did we, what have we done to stay together so long? Yes, I believe mm. that um, what really helped is that first of all, you know, the foundation that was set before us um, spiritually and I believe that prepared us for um, our marriage and um, how we should keep God 
in the middle of our marriage, in the center of it. And I believe that really, really played an important part is that, you know, we pray together and, um, um, and then I think most part is that we're friends. Absolutely. We're, we've become, we were friends then, but it's like we're just closely, I mean spiritually and naturally so. We're um, close, and of course, um, I uh, um, I am his prime rib. Can mm, I say that? Sure, you can. All right, I'm his prime rib, and which means that he, uh, when you eat a rib, you make sure it's seasoned well. So, being that I'm his prime rib, he makes sure that I'm taken care of. <laughs> That's so nice. <laughs> you know, but I believe yeah, though, no, really, yeah. um, uh, that helps is that making sure you know that you're not selfish. You know, no. even though we have our differences, we know how to come together. And if we have to compromise, we have to. And then, if you tell me something, I'm open for correction. And then you're the same. Absolutely. Well, you and and what has happened in a lot of marriages. Um, the men have to know that um, the woman submitting to her him is not, it doesn't just happen because it's supposed to happen. Um, my wife trusts me, so if she trusts me, then it's easy for her to submit. And then I think uh, that that word submit may, uh, it turns a lot of people off nowadays, but it's not something that females should be afraid of. Because if a husband loves his wife the way Christ loved the church, think about what Christ did. He gave his life for the church. Christ gave his life for the church. I should be willing to give my life for my wife. And, and I've, ha I've had that, um, uh, I've been faced with that circumstance or that, that kind of situation where I was willing to give my life so that she could live. Um, the other thing is, is that when your mate trusts you completely, then they don't, they know that you're only going to tell them what's best for you together. And uh, a lot of times men want to just dictate, and you can't dictate until you've earned that kind of respect. And so my wife has never had to go to turn on a life. Uh, light switch and, and the light didn't come on. She never had to hide her car or anything. Or they never came, uh, you know, to repossess anything in our house. And God has favored us where I was able to do what I said I would do. And so she trusts me. And so when individuals trust each other, they're able to go forward. That's so important, Bishop, yeah. because. Um, Sometimes I think some ladies misinterpret that the word submit sure. doesn't mean slavery. Yeah. You know, yeah. but um, you have to know that God sent your man or your husband yeah. to cover you yeah. or to um, be the head. But let me just tell you a little something, ladies. They may be the head, but with the neck that turns it. Just wanted to give you that. <laughs> <laughs> okay. but, but seriously, okay. I, I believe that, you know, as you said, you said it so well, is that you have proven to be a man of integrity and that I could trust um, to uh, spiritually and naturally. So, again, you know, so that's so important. You have to have a balance. You yeah, know? absolutely. Yeah, it's important to have a balance, and, and I respect you as my leader, and then when we leave the church, I know how to go home and respect you as my husband. Yeah, funny story, funny <laughs> story, I'm coming in. Okay, so I was, uh, when I first made bishop, you know, and uh, went home, and you know, I'm the bishop, they were like, yeah, all right, Bishop J. Drew's here. And so I was kind of, kind of floating on cloud nine, Get, got on, she said, no, this is in the car. She said, you still gonna take out that garbage. <laughs> One more thing I wanna add is um, when God made man, of course, uh, he, uh, he allowed man to have all these animals, everything, and the Bible says that when God 
observed Adam that he noted that Adam was lonely. And so he caused a deep sleep to come over Adam so that he could give Adam a mate that was suitable. Now, I think in the original uh, Hebrew, it's the uh, language is meet, M-E-T-E, -E, suitable for him. So he caused him to go to sleep. He takes one of his ribs out. And the Bible says, brothers, that from that rib, he built a woman. Okay, now I know you, I know you scholars are going to check me out on that, but he built a woman. Now, the ribs protect the heart, and our arms protect our ribs. And so it's important that I treat my rib right, because in actuality, she's protecting my heart. And so I'm going to cover her because she is protecting my heart. And that's so key. And once we realize that, once the female realizes that she loves this man and she's protecting his heart, then the man and the man reciprocates by protecting what protects his heart. Then we don't we don't say things to hurt each other. And because I know she can hurt me because she's all she gotta do is uncover my heart. And I know she uh, you know she can be hurt because all I gotta do is uncover her. So we'll you know it, it's it's hand in hand. So that's why you know, the Bible also speaks about the two, the twain becoming one, and we become one, and what hurts her hurts me. What hurts me hurts her. You want to say something on that? Absolutely. I mean, that, um, that, going, that being said, I, I feel like that I, I am a woman of whom God had called me um, to be your wife. Yes. And it's been said... Um, or it is said that what God has put together, no man can put asunder. And even when um, things or possibly problems, or situations may come to separate us, but because we have that niche and that connection that God has joined together, nothing and no devil in hell can stop what God has put together. And I believe that if we pur purpose that in our hearts and make sure that that's within our minds mentally, that, you know, everything will go smooth. Good answer. <laughs> okay, uh, they ask us a question about how do you balance, um, I believe it's church, ministry, career, I think that's it, and marriage, church. Ministry, career, and marriage. Mm -hmm. How do you balance that? Um, I, I balance my church, career, and marriage. Church, I, ministry, mm -hmm. career, mm -hmm. and marriage. Yeah. That's I, a lot of balancing. It really is. It is. But I think what's most important to um, keep peace in the camp, if you allow me to say it like that, is that I put um, things in the right perspective. Um, if I if I am supposed to be the wife, I'm supposed to go home and be the wife that God has ordained us to be, and not um, say, well, something like, or for instance, you know, when the people call the house, mm -hmm. you know. Of course, that's, that's our ground. We have our downtime. Mm -hmm. And some of the church members call the house and they say, you know, well, uh, if I want to speak to Bishop, you know, sure, you can speak to Bishop. Sure, of course. Let me see if he's fine. You know, so it's the way you have to handle things. Mm -hmm. And I know how to put them in perspective, but I know how to cover you too. Mm -hmm. Now, if you're resting, now, I have to be the wife to cover you and say, well, is he, he's resting, can you possibly um, call him back or can I have him to call? You know, we have to handle things differently. Sure. And you probably wouldn't agree because you'll probably say, well, you should have woke me up. Sure. But I was covering your heart. Oh, wow, he's going to go there. <laughs> he's going to go there. But, you know, um, um, just so, because I know we're running out of time, they don't want to hear us that long. We, I think we only have about 20 minutes, but okay. but to the career, um, of course, um, um, the career, the, 
let, let me let me approach it from this point of view. The career, of course, uh, a, lot, a lot of people don't know, but I, I don't do it anymore, but I was a former school teacher, and then I kind of mingle in real estate, and I, you know, do some things there, and so, but I never, um, I never did anything uh, without my family in mind. Um, uh, when I make an investment, uh, uh, when I was teaching school, I, you know, I was when I was teaching school, I kind of saw this as my stepping stone to make life better for my family. Uh, and when I do investment uh, uh, in real estate or any kind of investment, is always about how can I make my family better. Uh, and so my ministry, as far as my ministry is concerned, of course, I have to always bring, I bring my family to be a part of ministry. One of the, what, one of the most diabolical things that I think we have a tendency to do in ministry, those of us who are in ministry, we make our families stay back for the sake of what people may say. And I don't do that. I, I have my children are involved in my ministry. My wife is involved in my ministry. And, uh, and uh, I think the uh, other thing is, is the, the, the church, uh, I, guess, I guess it kind of goes hand in hand. I'm, we have a unique relationship because all of us are doing ministry. All of us travel. All of us, when I say all of us, I, you know, I speak of my uh, my wife, my daughter, my son travels with my daughter, and of course he does his thing, and then uh, of course me. We all traveling, so we understand ministry. We were brought up to understand ministry, and so consequently, I have to give a lot of credit to my wife as far as our marriage is concerned, because she insists that we come together, go to dinner, the whole family, the family thing. Uh, I want to share this with you and then I'm, we'll close this part out. One of the things that happened in the early part of our men, men, marriage rather, is that I was doing my ministry, doing the church and she was on the road with our sisters doing whatever and, um, and it seemed like we were in two different worlds. Well, I noticed that she started coming home talking about this and that, about with a record deal or something. I had no idea what was going on. Um, and so because it was a greater part of her attention, then I started thinking, I better find out what's going on that has so much of her attention. I started reading books on, on the record industry. I became very knowledgeable about the record industry. The reason that I did that was because she was so involved in it. A lot of times we say, well, I got my career, you got your career. But what helps us spend time together is we become interested in each other's career. And then we want to see what, how can uh, I assist you in being a, a better person in your career and how can she assist me in being a better person in my career. Then that is so key to, a, to having a successful relationship. What do you think? I agree because I thought that was so brilliant of you, um, the way you handle it because you've shown, you have shown that um, you're not intimidated yeah. and by uh, by where God has me in ministry sure. and of course what you have done was taken that and allowed us to become one sure. business partner absolutely. as well so With I, that record company absolutely what's the name of it it's Karoo Records tell them how that Karoo what Karoo stands for the Karoo stands K is for Karen and then K -A. the K A is for Karen K A R and then yes. And you know what? Now that I think honey, about it, most no. Kids? Now that I think about it, most of Karu is Karen. Oh well, yeah. Okay. Okay. Now let's 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 look at it because that's not how we intended it to be. But now that I think about it, Karu K A R E W K A R E is Karen. Right. And I ain't got nothing but the W there. But no, <laughs> wait, I can't say it. No, no, wait a minute, wait a minute, hold on. This is a bit, I know y'all didn't, <laughs> didn't tune in for this. But here, now that we think, now that I think about it, the K is you, 
and the R is you, and the R E is both of us. And then I just got the W. You still got two letters of your name. I only got one. See, see. You know what? <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. But, but if ahead. that's how yes. we can. Sure. Karoo Records, of course. That's it's been my dream. And that's that's what I love about. Uh, Bishop, and that's what helps in a marriage is that how you can come together as one. He became the CEO for a dream that I had, and he was interested. So I think that I think that's what really brought us together as business partners as well. Is that he became interested in um, my career, and then he became the CEO over the record company. And um, I, I thought that was uh, a great example as, as leaders. Yeah, because you always want the best for your mate. You can't be threatened by your mate. If you're threatened by your mate, and this, I guess this, because we got to wrap it up, I'm sure. But the most important thing that we have to leave these couples with is that you cannot be threatened by That's your right. mate. That's right. I mean, the, That's right. The, the, the bigger she is, the bigger I am. The bigger I am, the bigger she is. Absolutely. You can't be threatened by your mate, and you have to genuinely want them to succeed. Yeah, genuinely. and you know, people literally think that at our ministry, I'm singing. No, no, no. This ministry is built off of the Word of God, and of course, I need it. When I get off that road, I make sure there's another way of balancing. I make sure I come off that plane, come straight to church, I'm back in ministry again from a whole nother um, perspective. So I, I believe that that, you know, I respect you as my leader. You know, of course, I, I'm, I'm heading over my ministry, over my sure. production. Sure. But when I come off that road, I'm, I'm still submitted to the leadership uh, of my husband and being my pastor as well. So I, I just want to tell you, thank you. Honey. I think we threw, honey. I think we took up too much time. We probably did. <laughs> but I hope that we were able to help and this kind of stuff. We love to do this uh, kind of stuff. And if we can uh, assist in any other way in helping young people uh, strengthen their marriage, it would be our pleasure, right? Absolutely. Thank you. God bless you.